Um, we do have an associated student group, uh, government. So we have the associated student government, ASG, uh, in case I use that acronym a couple times. So ASG, um, I've talked with them about textbook affordability in terms of we want to be able to provide some kind of workshop or place where students can learn a little bit more about the fact that they can actually look at the class schedule for either free or low cost materials. And so I talked with ASG and Student Life to kind of get their sense of what might work best for students and what might actually attract students to, to learning more about that. And so we made sure to offer food, <laughs> donuts, um, and a chance to, to win a free pizza. That was good. And we also turned it into something broader than just looking at the class schedule. We also talked about course reserves. We talked about safe ways to access scanned books on the internet. So, you know, when folks inevitably find those free PDFs, which we love, we don't judge, you know, we're not going to judge. <laughs> so um, thinking about using older editions of textbooks and working with faculty on that. So we try to broaden it out. So it's more about like course materials on a budget, I think is what we called it. So because we, it sounded like um, students in the ASG were like, yeah, I don't know if students are going to really want, you know, like if it's, if it's just like, oh yeah, how to locate courses in the class schedule that are low cost or free, they may not be as interested, but if it's kind of a broader sort of, yeah, like kind of already taking into account some of the strategies that they are putting in place, like going online to find materials, you know, things like that, then it might make a little bit more sense. So that's what I've done with students so far to try to get a little bit more of that word out. I've also created a guide uh, for students on how to locate yeah, and, and we, I believe we were able to get that linked on the registration instructions. You should see instructions on how to filter their courses by low cost or OER or both. So I believe that that is embedded in the registration instructions. At nice. least I hope it still is. Um, I know that it was something that happened last year. And so I hope it still is. I should check actually and see if it still is. And if it isn't, just be like, hey, by the way, you might want to include this in there. Um, so that's really good I work with those folks. And I want to have students involved with that. And I've done, I've done workshop training. Like I did a session for faculty. Um, and then I did one for student government. Cause it's, it's kind of hard to student nail down, like, oh, how do I hit every student? Um, so I did, um, a full, like, welcome, because we had an entirely new student government this year, and so I gave them, like, a full little pamphlet packet that I made, and I made them their own page on the live guide, too, just for, like, student government of OC, um, and it wasn't, it, they didn't pick that as their issue of, like, woohoo, we love OER, did, uh, get another student, um, who was working on a, Kind of an end of course project for one of his professors who herself is a huge OER adopter. He uh, interviewed to ask me about like all these OER questions. So the word is getting out to students in other ways, even if it's not the original way I necessarily intended. But um, and the the lib guide, it does have a video I need to update on helping students select OER classes in the catalog and just kind of understanding the labeling structure from the student perspective.